Snapchat. Please hang on. <laughs> Stand by. Welcome back to Rewind with B. Schwitty because it's morphin' time. Today on Rewind, we're going to be playing uh, Zin Zig with my friend Natalie Montgomery. She works at Midnight Sellers. Uh, I think you have a new title as of recently. I don't remember. I am now Sales and Marketing Manager. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so we're going to be playing a game called Zin Zig. I'm going to give you a brief overview and then we're going to start playing. Um, so Zinzig, you get to play as one of six characters, Bianca, Lando, Stefan, and three others that I can't really read. Uh, it's kind of like Trivial Pursuit except for wine. Uh, you're going to pick up a card, I'm going to ask a question, multiple choice questions, um, there's blind tasting questions, that's why we have three bottles open, and uh, we have today a Niner Wine Estates Carmenier from 2012. Uh, a 2012 Malbec, I guess we're going to win the vintage questions, uh, except for this 2011 Merlot from Tobin James, and this is a part of the Blue Moon Reserve. And if you want to pass me those uh, three bags over there, I'll shuffle them up. So fancy. And on top of that, uh, there are these wineries. You get to choose which winery you want to own. Well, I'm a dancing warrior. Do I pick now? Yes. yes. And I also think I'm a Bianca. Excellent. And I'm I... I'm a Bianca, but I'll take her. You know, everyone could be a Bianca if they try. Mm. Um, for me, I see a uh, Le Chateau. I'll take that one. I can't even look at the other thing. Sweet set... Sweet Saturn flow from this castle vineyard with vines so ancient the first were planted in honor of Henry VIII's marriage to Anne Boleyn. I'm already jealous of yours. Great flavor text. <laughs> with a nod to New Zealand's... Uh, um, Maori. History. This crisp yet delicate Riesling is brought to bottle by three generations of South Island Mintners. Ooh. So much and with my Le Chateau, I guess I should take... Uh, Oh, sorry. That says Steuben. Absolutely not. I go with a little. Yeah, it's Steuben. Lando. I thought it said Stefan. I was going for a whole. in honor of Stefan thing. Hmm. You know, our, our good friend over at. Um, Laventer. <laughs> okay, okay Landot. What is it? Lando. Lando, Landot. right? Landot. His name can't be Landot, can it? Yeah, it's super ethnic. All right. All right, let's do this. Uh, so I think we just place our marker on our winery that we started at. Okay. I'm over here. Okay. And uh, if you want to roll first, go right ahead. Four. Uh, I think we're going clockwise. Trade. So trade. Trade. Answer correctly to win the card. You may discard two of the same resource cards from your hand for one of your for one card of your choice from the discard pile. Uh, you may not trade if you answer wrong. So, uh, oh, I guess I have to pull this for you. Trivia. Question. A vino de mesa is a Portuguese blank. Is it A, table wine, B, fragrant sherry, C, green white wine, or D, estate bottled wine. What was the name of it? Vino de Mesa. That's V-I-N-H-O. De Mesa. Table wine, fragrant cherry, green white wine, or estate bottled wine. 
I feel like it's a table wine. All right, going to table wine, locking it in. Yes. You are correct. Yes. This is your card. Yes. You have grapes. So I may have forgotten to explain it already, but we just need uh, four items. Grapes, bottles, corks, and uh, barrels. <laughs> and then we just have to answer the questions going up this path to Zinzig, uh, where we will have our winery finished and bottled. Uh, I guess I'm going next. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, sip and savor. Sip and savor. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your wine. Draw one card to keep and skip the question. All players can taste the wines and look at the labels to refresh their palate. So if you want to retaste all the wines... I just get the card for free. Oh, really? Yep. Can I have a little taste of one? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, this one. I'm ready. One, no, one. Awesome. Swap. So you can, if you answer correctly to win the card, uh, you may trade the card you won with a better card from the player of your choice, which I guess means me. Hmm. Uh, and you can't so swap with someone who is in the production cycle answer wrong and you lose your chance to swap and the card i assume yes. all right another trivia mm -hmm. question to become a master sommelier one must blank a have worked in a fine restaurant for 10 years b pass the exam at the court of master sommeliers c get a master vintner's recommendation uh, or d open and open an award-winning winery that again is a have worked in a fine restaurant for 10 years b passed the exam at the course at the court of master sommeliers uh c i think you already have your answer b i think b b is correct yes. now you can either take the barrel so what you need or you could swap it. it for my bottles mm -hmm. i'll keep it all right wiener wiener another five one two three four five five <laughs> quick Stomped. Disaster has struck. Answer correctly to keep your card. Answer incorrectly and lose one card from your hand as specified by the board space. Wait, so I read the card? Yeah, and okay. it's I have to get it right or else I lose it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Which of the following is a real wine name? A. Fat Bastard. B. Scraping the Barrel. C. Bloody Good White. Or D. All of the above. Ooh. Well, I know Fat Bastard's one. See, that sounds like a beer to me. I know. So, uh, but, not off to a great start. Huh. Keep going. I mean, Zin Bitch is a wine. True. Well, Fat Bastard's a character in a Mike Myers movie. The worst movie ever. It's okay. Keep going. Uh, no. Don't. No. no. Um, okay. uh, Scraping the Beyonce barrel. was in that. Was she really? She was. She was, uh, that was the third one. She was in, she was uh, Foxy something. See, I stopped after one. They uh, two favorite. was, uh, three was kind of getting back there. Um, Fred okay. Savage was also in that. Uh, Redeemable. Fat Bastard, <laughs> mole, mole, Scraping mole, mole, the mole, Barrel, <laughs> Bloody Good White, or D, All of the Above? I feel like D, All of the Above. Are you keeping that answer? Yes. You're right. Because how would they expect me to know otherwise? Yeah, true. <laughs> Meta gaming for the win. I think what I, I get, do with it? I get the card. You get oh, tied. Still tied. Oh. You're up, and we haven't even had a blind tasting yet. This is not fun. Just kidding. Four. I should have pre-stacked the cards. One, two, three, four. What happens now? Uh, you're at a winery, but um, not owned. Answer correctly to win the card and the deed to the winery. Answer wrong and return the card to the discard pile. So this is like the monopoly portion. Uh, if we land on, yeah, you could win it. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Let's see. Question. The invention of the wine cork in the late 1700s brought about this change. A, the shape of the bottle. B, the temperature for storing red wine. C, the amount of wine in a bottle from 1 liter to 1.5 liters. Or D, increased amount of sediment at the bottom of the glass. The invention of the wine cork. Let's start again. Okay, the invention, <laughs> the invention of the wine cork in the late 1700s brought about the following change. Is it A, the shape of the bottle changed? 
Is it B, the temperature for storing red wine changed? Is it C, the amount of wine in a bottle from 1 liter to 1.5 liters? Or D, an increased amount of sediment at the bottom of the glass? My gut says B, kind of want to go with D. I'm going to stick with B. All right. It is A. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I did not know that. Okay, it's about a bottle. I should have known. Yes, but um, so it says with a wine cork, wine, sorry, <laughs> wine with a cork uh, can be handily stacked, but a short round bottle does not lend itself to stacking. So clever winemakers put their bottles on a diet, resulting in the long, narrow bottles found today. Huh. Because you could lay it on its side, I guess. I'm not sure. I guess that makes sense. Um, well, you don't get the winery. Damn it. But you don't lose anything either. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Infection. Vinegar <laughs> taint. <laughs> or taint taint. Uh, answer wrong and love and lose. Sorry. Answer wrong and lose one barrel card. So... I don't even have a barrel card, so I don't even have to worry. <laughs> so I do I read it? Yes. And if you get it wrong, nothing happens? Uh, if I get it wrong, I don't get the card. Oh, okay. That's the only thing. Wait. This is a blind wine tasting card? Oh, crap. So I pour you it, and you guess what it says? Sure. Well, it says vintage. <laughs> Am I not supposed to tell you what it says? No. Okay. Oh, damn it. Okay. I have, this is going to be a total surprise. I'm sorry, I should have picked different vintages. I completely forgot. Don't look. I'm not. Okay. Here. I have a heavy pour. Thank you. Oh, I should have looked at it. Do you know which bottle it was? I do, but turn around. Don't look. I think I know what it is. Don't look. I'm not looking. Pretend you don't know. I'm not looking. Oh, shoot. I, I ripped the whole bag off. Don't look. Shh. Okay. Uh, just from the nose. I f you know what I forgot to do when we were trying these? I forgot to look at the color. I know. I didn't either. I thought that was going to be a dead giveaway, but... Um, I think this is a 2011, the Tobin James wine. It is. Yay! Yay! Now, so we went with the easy mode. Um, the They suggested that you pick wines from the same region. I completely forgot to do different vintages because I wasn't thinking, slash didn't even look. And uh, we have two of the same vintage, so I really lucked out on that one. Yeah. Sorry, Natalie, you should have got that I have one. a good memory, so I'll be good at this. Why do I keep getting one? Swap. Uh, answer correctly to win a card, and you can swap it for one of mine if you want, which would help us both out. Yes. Trivia. A Riesling should never be described as blank. Crisp, hot, fruity, or light. A Riesling, or, uh, yes, a Riesling should never be described as blank. Crisp, hot, fruity, or light. Okay, you're saying hot very super clearly. Did I? And I feel like it's hot, but... Go with your gut. One more time. I will try not to, to do a cadence on that. A Riesling should never be described as blank. A crisp, B hot, C fruity, or D light. Not delight, D, uh, D light. I'm gonna hope it's hot. That is correct. This is yours. You can swap it for any one of my cards. Hmm. I think I'll swap it for a cork card. Oh, good. Then maybe we might get done with this on this reasonable hour. <laughs> wow, How just, many? We need... So I need... You bottle. just need a bottle. I yes. need a... I need a barrel. Okay. Two. One, two. Try not to get an infection again. La Belle Winery. <laughs> uh, I landed on a winery. None awesome. of us own it. So... So you read me a question and I might get the deed. 
if I get it right. So, the best way to tone down the sweetness of a wine is to blank. A, decant it for at least 20 minutes. B, swirl it in the glass until the legs appear. C, drink it with grapes and bread. D, chill it. I honestly don't know. I mean, to get rid of the sweetness, that doesn't even... Can you do that? that is that something you can do? I'm, I... I mean... Uh, I would... Uh, decant it for at least 20 minutes, swirl it in the glass until the legs appear, or drink it with gri- grapes and bread, or D, chill it. None of those answers sound intelligible at all. Uh, I mean, I anything mean, with grapes and bread is better. Right. So that would be my answer. It, it might it might pare down the, uh, the fruitiness. I mean, the legs would be a function of the alcohol, and if it was high, it would balance off of the sugar. But it's not like it unlocks the alcohol just yeah. by swirling it. Um, I would go with decanting because that's the only thing that I can think of that would really change the state of the wine. It's chilling it. Son of a biscuit. Be like well, that, like I guess when, you, also. when you taste whites, you want it to be or cool. No, you, yeah, yeah. Well, mm, Still. Oh, I don't know. Uh, so oh, no one gets wrong. this card. Okay. Nope. And you get to roll. Yes. I don't know why. why? Every time! <laughs> Answer correctly to win the card. You may discard two of the same resource card from your hand for one card of your choice from the discard pile. Unfortunately, there's nothing oh. you want in there. Well, I want the bottle. Oh, yeah, you do. But you don't but have to. But I don't want to trade one for it. That's what has to happen. Yep. Question. A wine is called gnarly when it is too blank, right? <laughs> right? I. This is. Okay. These are awful questions. This uh, is like if I wrote a card and slid it in the deck. Like, what is this supposed to mean? Please start. Read it again. A wine is called gnarly when it is too blank. Uh, is it too grapey, too sediment laden, uh, too rough, or too smooth? Gnarly, as in, dude, that line is gnarly. See, I would think that. It would be if it had a lot of sediment, like that's really gnarly and like bumpy. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. That's uh, what I go to. So it's grapey, sediment laden, sediment, yeah. rough or oh. smooth. Okay, there you go again. What? <laughs> something, something rough or smooth. I'm gonna have to look at this in the playback because I don't Please. know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, I wanted to pick B. Grapey. Now I want to say rough. <laughs> Sorry, so. grapey sediment laden <laughs> rough or smooth am i really doing that you really are <laughs> i feel like i know what it is but i'm not going to change my answer sediment laden <laughs> it's rough <laughs> maybe we should have a third party read these questions <laughs> no, this is not good dude the wine is gnarly it means the wine <laughs> suffers from excess tannins <laughs> Which you really had to read into that question for any of that to make sense. <laughs> okay. That's why I'll I, take the loss on that, that one. That might be why I was going rough. Just the way your mother likes it, Trebek. <laughs> God. Moo. I can't play this. Trade. Why is this a question? Okay. <clears throat> if a wine is called brooding, it means it has. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> A, layers of bold fruit flavors. B, extensive tannins. C, a very dry finish. Or D, subtle fruit but layers of smoke, oak, or other more complex flavors. I'm going to go D. Just because that's how I would describe brooding. Despite the popularity of the Twilight series, no one has named a brooding wine vintage Edward Cullen this far. Why? Did I get it correct? Yeah. (laughs) What? (laughs) Okay, everyone knows that if it's not B, it's the longest answer on the card. That makes sense. Right? There. Oh, you win it. I won it. Oh, so now you win? 
Uh, no, I have to answer more questions correctly okay. on my way to Prepare the... Prepare to be wrong. Thank you. Actually, while I'm still out here, you can you can swap cards with me or something. I can swap. No, I want to keep mine for now. Fair right? enough. Okay. Yes. Four. Yes. Trade. Answer correctly to win the card. You may discard two of the same resources to something, something, something. So if you win this card... I can take one of your cards so you have double and you lose. Yes. Yes. Dirty pool. All right. Um, it's a blind tasting. And you have to name the winery or the vineyard. Okay. Do you know which one's which? No, I mixed them up so you wouldn't know. No, I don't know. Fair enough. I'm ready. All right. Really not ready. <laughs> Sorry. The big four. Yep, we can always pass it out. <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to it just so I remember. <laughs> also, I made the necks, uh, or I picked the bottles that are the same height for that reason. <laughs> this is the Castoro Malbec for sure. Gosh darn it. Let's see. It is the Castoro Malbec. Nice job. That so, licorice. you can um, yes. trade two of them and steal my bottle. So, yeah, I want your bottle. And then I get... No, you discard them. What? I don't get to keep it? Because I need it. <laughs> Is that the rules? I want to mm. win fairly. Uh, you have to discard both. Okay, here. No, you have to discard both uh, grapes. Oh. Oops. But... But I got to keep one. And now I can't go into the uh, stupid thing. All right. Fair. We just uh, we just elongated this because we thought it would be fun. I like to win. That's why. Oh, fair enough. Uh, four. One, two, three, four. God. Get Quart. all these. Wine spoilage detected. Answer wrong and lose one bottle card. Oh, good. I already lost that. <laughs> <sighs> All right. No stakes. <laughs> All right. According to experts, where is the worst place in the house to store wine? Um, probably in the corner over there. Uh, mine would be the cabinet above the stove. Oh yeah, or not that, the hard way. I I left my coconut oil over my stove once. God. Oh God. Um, a the basement. B the kitchen. C, the attic, or D, the garage? Mm. Worst place in the house to store wine? Probably the attic out of all four of those. The final answer. Since heat rises. Uh, or the garage, but... All wrong. It's the kitchen. Really? We're not denying that storing wine in the garage is inelegant, but wine's worst enemy is heat, making a warm kitchen a no-no. It's not I like, still think the attic, because that's what I would pick. <laughs> that's where all the heat goes. I guess so, it's insulated up there or something? I, I don't know. I lost it. Honestly, uh, I feel like that's wrong. But Yeah, me too. I think a lot of these questions are, yeah. <laughs> are awful. Uh, so now we just get to trivia. Ooh, a wild card. Okay. And you don't even need it. When a wine is called dumb, <laughs> when a card, when a board game about wine is called dumb, it's called Zinzig. <laughs> Uh, trivia. Wait, have you played this game before? This is literally the first time. Okay. I'm... Uh, the, How do you I... know all the rules? Did you study before I got here? There's a card. Like I've. Okay, been... I still can't read this. I've been reading. It's the like card. I learned Pictionary for the first time every time I play it. And there's a wine tasting guide. I guess uh. you could have used that, but. Um... All right. Anyway, continue. Yeah. When something is dumb. <laughs> when a wine is called dumb. It is in reference to blank, the aroma, the wine label misspellings, yes. the lack of bubbles in a champagne, or D, silent cork removal. When his wine is called dumb, it is reference to the aroma, wine label misspellings, lack of bubbles in a champagne, or silent cork removal. Did I do it this time? No. Good. I mean, I would assume... You're a little dumb if you have a bunch of misspellings, but... Very true. It's oh, misspellings. A. What? Uh, it's A. None of them? 
What was uh, that? A dumb wine didn't fail out of wine school. It just has little or no aroma. Some wines begin dumb and then develop an aroma over time. Who writes this crap? Yeah, it's like the Edward Cohen one. I mean, <laughs> hey, wow, please don't compare my like wine and Twilight. Yeah, this is uh, obviously made for... Um, for... Mm, a, a outlier of my demographic. Hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> swap. But I, I can't swap because you're already on the thing. But you gotta read me a question. Ooh, blind wine tasting. God damn it. This one's not fair. Is it vintage again? It's region or country. Oh. Uh, Way to pick only Paso wine. Well, it told me to. Did it? It did. Um, so you can be like, for, oh, here's one easy. type of question. For beginners, choose different wines from the same region. For example, taste it Bordeaux, Bordeaux, Rhone, Burgundy, or from France. What was that first one again? Bordeaux. Okay. Okay, how about I have to guess um, the, the winery. Okay. Also, I see Rick and Morty. Wubba lubba dub dub. It's coming back this weekend. So many. Okay, don't look still. Even though I pulled down this, you probably saw. Okay, go. Oh, wait. Right. Don't look. Don't look. I didn't look. You could always wait until I do it, and then you wouldn't feel like you're giving it away. Okay. Um, it's not Tobin. I want to say it's the Carmenier, but... It's opened up since we since we've uh, started playing. I'm gonna go with the Castoro. Final answer. The final answer. Final answer. You should always go with your gut. Dang it! That's why I failed the psalm too. <laughs> uh, this is why I'm gonna kick your butt at this game. All right, you're up. You have to answer four questions correct. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, this iconic sex symbol is said to have bathed in bottles of fine champagne. Can I answer this before it starts? No, please don't. Don't trust me. It's Go. not It's not the whose bosom is the champagne glass. Uh, okay. Uh, they, this iconic sex symbol is said to have bathed in bottles of fine champagne. Is it A, Jane Mansfield, B, Elizabeth Taylor, this is the audience that I'm talking about, uh, C, Marilyn Monroe, or D, Rita Hayworth? C, I'd go straight for Marilyn Monroe. And is that your final answer? Yes. Yes, the lovely Marilyn Monroe made this claim, and when asked what she had on when she went to bed, Monroe famously answered, the radio. Um, you can have... <sighs> She's so classy. So classy. I Do I get to trade these? Do I have to keep it? No, they're all yeah. yours, and you move up the totem pole. Yes. I, on the other hand, ooh, might get a bottle. Three. One, two, three. I get the card. I get the card. You get it no matter what? Sip and savor, biznitch. Uh, okay. So now you're just one long question away from Oh, I don't even me. have to roll? No, nope. we're win. just going up to the totem pole. And it's a blind tasting. <laughs> With region or country. Oh, I have no idea. Let's go. Okay, for real, what do I, what do I pick? What bottle it is? If you want to. I mean, I will give it to you either way. <laughs> but if you want to play. Like, I do want to play. I want to win fairly. I want to beat you at wine. You heard it here first. She wants to beat me at wine. 